Every now and then, for whatever reason, God asked me to just give you guys a little bit of an update on what's going on in our missions, because, um, you know, it's, I think it's important. Um, all these things started from nothing. Just, it was not a vision of mine, even. Uh, nobody could take the credit. Um, I had no vision for these things. Just, um, if you know me long enough, I'm here 18 years, the way I operate is what he says I do. I don't have an agenda. I don't have a mission statement. Yeah, I do have a mission statement. What he says I do. And I, I, think, I think you should really, I'm not telling you how to conduct yourself as a believer. You have your own personal relationship with God. But I think that would be a great mission statement for all of you. You know? I mean, you know, the greatest sermon ever preached, and there's a lot of good sermons, but the greatest by far is the Sermon on the Mount. Nothing will ever compete with that sermon. But the second best sermon was Yeshua's mom. And her sermon was real short. Whatever he says, do. Remember? I, I wish more believers would just not operate in their own ideologies and their own ministries and just follow the cloud. So I just want to show you what's going on a little bit. We have some pics for you to see. Um, so this is, this is Australia. And I don't, I don't have a lot of time. You know, we could talk about each one of these for 20 minutes, but we obviously don't have that time. I just want to say uh, I, I met Arnie in Australia. He was just playing guitar at a church that I was preaching at. And the Lord spoke some things to him prophetically, and he could not believe it. But now it came to fruition. And he's making an impact all over Australia. He's, um, in fact, they're starting a messianic uh, seminary. And... Um, <laughs> He's involved with the government there, and the government, if you think our government is liberal, you have no idea. You, you have no idea. Right now in, in, East, in Western Australia, if a person just comes up to you and they're, talk, they're thinking about becoming transgender, and you just have a conversation with them one year in jail for you, even if that person is your child. So this is where the world is going. But anyway, they're doing phenomenally well, and I'm so proud of them. I'm just so proud of him. I'm so proud of you. I know you're probably watching. Um, next up is India. Now, these are, if you know how India works, you know, in southeast India where I go, this is a caste system. So these are still the Dalits. You've got the Brahmins, the priests, and their job is to carry out the dung from the villages. Um, we started with Samuel in a mud hut with his wife and no children at the time. And now we have 200 pastors and with 200 congregations, and we have 1,500 new believers, new Dalits, and over the last month, we fed 150,000 families, 150,000. Um, I can't read you his email, but he just said to me, I was, a, I was a dead dog. You know, he was really suicidal at the point when I met him, and he'll admit that. I'm not speaking out of, out of tune here. And he said, now, Rabbi, I'm on, they put me on, TV a few times, and he said, I'm famous, although he's so humble. You know, these guys are so humble, they won't even say my ministry. They always refer to it as his ministry. Never my. And uh, it's unbelievable what goes on down there. It's rural, man. It's the jungle. Right now in Southeast India, I don't know if you're aware of it, but thousands and thousands of people are dying of COVID every day. Every day, they're just dying in the streets. You know, there's nowhere for them to go. And it's so, it's so, everybody's so close, it's spreading like crazy there. I mean, the, a, a little local crematorium, which used to burn two bodies a day, now burning 150 bodies a day. So, uh, keep them in your prayers. Next up um, is Kenya. Um, also, these were, these were throwaways. These are kids without parents. A lot of their parents died from AIDS. These were throwaways. And I'm just going to tell you something. This is just the, the truth, Okay. Not Nakuru, you know, the, the biggest slum in the world is in Nairobi. And, and, and a mile away from the slum, guys are driving Mercedes. So people are oblivious to their own. We're living in a time that it's so shameless and so selfish like never before. I, I've never seen, you know, I'm 62 years old. I grew up in a different time, post-World War II, when everybody was looking to help each other. Now it's me and mines. Just, just horrific. There's so much going on in Kenya. I, I, I could just tell you that we're taking the message out of Kenya 
We're in Rwanda, we're in Uganda, and we're in Ghana. And Stephen broadcasts now. He has a whole broadcast thing. Um, it's unbelievable. We're building buildings. Now, this might not look like our building, but trust me, this is the Taj Mahal in Kenya. And we're building congregations, and we have programs, and we're drilling water for people. It's unbelievable what you guys are doing and the online people. We could never pull this off without the online people. When God said, get the camera, I was, you know, you've heard the story, I was totally opposed to it. I didn't want to be on camera. I didn't want to be recorded. Uh, I was concerned that I make mistakes. I just didn't want to. But without that camera, we wouldn't have online people. Without that camera, some of you wouldn't be here. How, it's just, just, by a, just stand if you moved here from out of state. Look around, guys. And, and these are all the pastors that are, that are under our umbrella. It's, it's insane. It's just insane. And let me tell you something. Um, you have never met humble people like these guys. Uh, I, I couldn't even begin to describe it. But they're nothing like American pastors. Forgive me, but it's just the way it is. I have a different perspective. You know, when a kid here says they're starving, that means it's 11 o'clock, men didn't have breakfast. When somebody there says they're starving, they're dying. They're dying. A little different. Um, it's amazing what's going on. Stephen, you're probably watching too. We just went to Ethiopia. That's next. We started uh, three congregations there. And most of these are Jewish people who are persecuted. They didn't make it over to Israel. They're the better Israel group. And they're still being persecuted. There's villages where if somebody gets sick, they say it was because a Jew gave them the evil eye. And they beat them and torture them. And so out of Nowhere, three congregations open up and people are being saved and baptized on a regular basis. It's unbelievable. Um, of course, you know about Neve Michael. I mean, we've probably donated. I don't know the accountants. No, I can get a number for you, but well over a million dollars to them and metamorphosized their whole place. It's like no other children's village. These are 300 kids that have been abused that are now being healed like nobody's business. I think we have a little video, a quick little video, do we? What a blessed opportunity I have right now to thank all of you for making the Ve Michael the beautiful, wonderful, loving home for children at risk that it is today. And I must tell you, there are many homes in Israel. There are many homes in the world, residential homes for children at risk, but there is no other home in Israel in the whole country like Neve Michael. Neve Michael is the only home that has so many vital services. The Children's Crisis Center, Emergency, the Teenage Girls Crisis Center, the Special Ed School, the Family Home, the Daycare Program, the External Crisis Center for Families at Risk, and all of these people come from all over Israel. All of these children, all of these families that we love, support, save. We are crying with happiness, and this could not have happened without you. I just, I just want you to know, this is a place that's very lean. I'm not pointing the fingers at anybody else, but we have, you know, four staff. The size of our congregation, we could have 30 staff, 40 staff. But if we have 30 or 40 staff, then the funds would go to payroll. We couldn't do these things. So sometimes when you call and you wonder why it might take a little bit to get back, that's because a 1,000 people are calling. It's, it's overwhelming. Roxanne and Regina work very hard. They're not you know, just answering the phone. <laughs> no, they're just not answering the phone. Um, they, they eat at their desk sometimes, you know, and I, I work them, you know, because God keeps giving me ideas, and I call them and say, we need to do this, need to do that, and every time I call, I know they're shaking when they answer the phone. I know they are, <laughs> and I know you probably, the two of you say a couple of choice things about me, but that's okay. <laughs> I wouldn't be the first one that said that, um, and also you should know about Foster Foundation. Um, you know, Bill Foster and I teamed up together, and we're partners. I think yeah, I think I'm on the board there. Um, and and um, what we're doing with these iPads, I want you to know something. I'm just going to share this with you, okay? These kids are severely mentally challenged. 
And you might wonder, what happens to mentally challenged kids, Rabbi? A child that can't make a decision, that doesn't understand sin and repents, all those mentally challenged kids are in the kingdom. And when the kingdom comes, they will not be mentally challenged anymore. Yeah. And, and for any of you watching that might have lost a child, I want to tell you something. You lose a child at two or three, you're going to have that child back when the millennium kingdom comes. But the good news is, is that you're going to have them forever, and you'll never have to take them to a children's hospital or a cancer ward ever, ever, ever again. They're in the kingdom. Um, let me show you a quick, uh, little quick video of what these iPads that we're sending are doing to these kids, giving them life. Guys, I'm just going to tell you, um, these are the least of them. Yeah. And, and you're bringing them life on purpose. Um, I mean, it's, it's nice to preach to people keep feeding them, but some people are just too fat sitting in the pews. You know? Yeshua is coming back in his Father's glory and his recompense is with him, and he's going to repay everybody for what they've done, not what they believed. Um, we just sent Neve Michael $75,000. We just sent for 500 more, uh, 25000 for 500 more iPads, and we're doing another uh, mission with these wheelchairs. These wheelchairs are $10,000, custom wheelchairs. But we have a connection with a, a ministry called Hope Haven, and I have a connection to send them over for free to Israel. So we're going to be doing that in November again. So this is what you're doing. We, we could not, I mean, I know this is trite because you hear it all the time, but I'm telling you, it's impossible to do it without you. It's not possible. You know what I mean? The funds don't come from the air. Nobody signs a check, Yeshua, Hamashiach. You know what I mean? God works through us. And last but not least, I want to feature something. Um, Chris Yon, who, I don't know how long you guys have been coming here. Where are you? Are you guys around? Um, how long have you guys been coming? Like 15 years? 15, 16 years, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, from West Highland, way back. And, and they've been wonderful. Um, Kim, I speak to a lot. Chris, I don't speak to too much. He's a quiet guy. But um, every year I would ask him, you know, what do you need? He has a beautiful ministry. What do you need? What do you need? And he would always say, I'm, you know, I'm covered. Not out of pride. He was being honest. He's covered. If he's covered, he's covered, you know? Um, there's times people send in big checks and we send them back because we're covered, we're covered. Um, but this year I asked him and he's doing something. So I want to show you a, a quick video uh, and let you know what we're doing.
So this is the last one. It's seven, seven mile camp. Consists of 30 acres, a five acre pond. Um, five cabins, 6,000 square foot dining hall with athletic facilities and you saw the zip line rock wall and so on and so forth. Um, it says here that we are 100% committed to being debt free and done. So uh, Chris made a list. All of the labor is donated to the facility. But he made a list of things he needs, septic tanks, and the list added it to $80,000. So Chris, I want you to know that yesterday a check went out to 80, for $80,000 to you. So, um, <laughs> you should, um, you guys and you guys online, especially because you don't even get to drink the coffee here, right? Um, you guys should be very proud and very protective of this place. I've been around all over the world, and I'm not saying there's not other good places, because there are, and I'm not saying there's not other good leaders, because there are, there are, there really are. But this is just one of them. And you should be very proud of what God's doing here through you guys. Amen?